here's the thing when it when it comes to uh when it comes to checking the numbers in the china harbor project for the bridge we can sit down later on and we can check the numbers for them, right i want to have this other discussion here one time so i'm gonna go ahead and have this and get this out of the way but we're gonna check into the numbers on that later good Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Papa Snow here coming to you live out of Guyana. All right. So, you know, I'm here to have a really cool discussion with you guys this morning. A lot of things that we've been checking up. Uh, one particular issue that we need to have a discussion about because it deals with public safety. Uh, you know, prevention better than cure, right? Always prevention is better than cure. This is a message to Minister Ben. I believe, who is currently in charge of like public security, so on and so forth. Okay, we're going to be discussing uh, the issue that happened yesterday, the incident that happened yesterday at the marketplace, the Starbuck marketplace, where there was a young man, a 16-year-old man, who has been uh, accused, I would say accused, and judged at the same time uh, for snatching a woman's chain as their report reads. Someone has snatched someone's chain and was shot subsequently, was shot by the woman's husband who happened to be a police officer. I guess he was off duty at the moment, but police officer nonetheless. All right. So let, let's talk about this for a minute. Like, first and foremost, let, let, let's go over some history, right? Starbrook Market has a bad history, okay? This is well known, this is a well known public fact, unless you really are not like living in Guyana or you're stupid scunt and you don't know what's going on. Right? Maybe you're a foreigner, you just come in and you don't know what's going on. So let me tell you right now. Look, if you ain't got your head on straight, you can't go by Starbrook Market. You can't go by any market here in Guyana. Why? Because the thief man them this lime at the market. Not just the thief man them. But the thief man bosses this lime at the market. That man is see you walking by, and one man from this corner don't mark you. He go tell his partner who they down the road, and your crew of thief man them that they in and out you out the crowd. Look, we we find one right there. Look at the woman. She got a nice chain on her neck. They would mark you. Then as you walking through the marketplace, you wouldn't even know. Who it is stalking you? These buyers is working teams. This is not this is not a an individual random act as some persons, right? As some as some persons might think that it is an individual random act that a thief man might just be sitting there and he's working alone. Do not be fooled, ladies and gentlemen. Right? Because even in the incident with this chain thing. If the young boy was to steal the chain, where do you think the chain would be sold? The young boy would have run around the block, come back on the go on the big market, big clock, go under the clock, and he would sell the same thief and jewelry to the people buying gold right on the day. This is no secret. This is not a secret. Right? If you guys want to get some of the best deal for buying gold, right? You gotta go under the clock at about two in the morning. Go under, go under big market clock, two in the morning. You can get the best gold price. Ah, uh, might not say it's the, it's cheap because it's sheer teeth and products. That's what the jar thumb band has been teething all day, and they couldn't move it here, and they couldn't move it there. So they can go back under the clock and they can sell you gold, they can sell your belongings. That has been a bartering spot for Thief Man for the last couple of decades. Under all administrations in this country, and not one administration in this country has been able to effectively clean up the situation. And I will tell you why. In my opinion, it's because the scunt don't want to clean it up. They don't want to clean it up because if they clean it up, how are their friends who are thief man them gonna get for eat? Who they gonna feed on? You can't you can't put the bandit on a government salary, even though we got plenty who already are, but they're normally sitting in higher positions, you know, holding up about sixty-five seats. But other than that, you know, bandits shouldn't be on payroll. So we got to address the situation a little bit differently. Right? 
But I must say everybody thief and thing gone and they need big market. Gone in big market to sell off. Not just there are other places that is happening. Right? So how can we prevent this? How can we prevent this? Well, our law has the answer to these problems. Constitutionally, our law, our constitution, has clauses and has parts and components within our constitution that allows us to address these matters and prevent incidents before it happens. But somehow it's like those who are in charge, not just now, right? Because I'm not here to just say, you know, Minister of Public Security, you, you don't know what you're doing because that's not the case. I would say all ministers of public security that would have ever sat there didn't know what the hell they were doing. Because if they knew what they were doing, they would follow the constitution and they would ensure that the law is upheld. And I will explain it to you because people are like, so what part of the constitution is keep thief man out? Well, I can tell you what part of the constitution is keep thief man out. Starbrook Marketplace, Border Market, La Penitence, all these marketplaces are known to be legitimate business places. People who operate in the market, who have stalls and who has these things, these people need to have business registrations. There is a deeds and a commercial registry in our country for a reason. You pay $5,000, you register your name, you register your business. People know who you are, they know that you are legitimate, they know that you are doing business based on this. If there is somebody underneath a uh, big market clock, buying and selling gold, changing money, all these things, you, got, you, you ain't got brain for know that those things are legal businesses that must be registered. Those are businesses that are required to pay taxes. Those are businesses that are required to have a valid address in order to operate as a business. But no, we don't have that. You walk, you walk in border market, you walk in Starbrook market, you see 10,000 people doing business. Two of the scut register as legal business enterprises. The rest of them is no man. Just, just kind of dead. You don't know who, who is a criminal. You don't know who is licensed to do business. You don't know if, if you're going to be robbed. You don't know what it is. But you know what? We got policemen them walking around the market every day. Looking for thief man. You dumb skunk them. You blind thief man. They're right in front of you doing business. But you can't identify that. Because some of y'all can't read. So you, you can't dare ask for a business registration. You see a man operating a business? Yo, by law, the man is supposed to have a business registration. The man is supposed to be registered in some sort of way to operate business. I do 10, 15 different type of business. I can show you. I got to register all for do it. I must be accountable to something. As a business owner, when I make money or profit from my business, tax man going to come down on me. There's a reason why the government must monitor all of these things. In my opinion, it's basically to rob the public a little bit more, but then there are some benefits to it. And one of the benefits to it is to know who is legit, who is not legit, and if somebody is there and if they have a valid purpose for being there. So our Constitution has articles in it to help prevent those types of headaches happening. And somebody says, so what does a business under the clock have to do with a young man, thief in a chain? Well, ladies and gentlemen, when you got people underneath big market clock, random people, and they're buying gold, and they're buying phones, and they're buying your belongings, and they're buying everything, and they're selling it back. Ladies and gentlemen, when you buy and sell, you are doing business. And by the fact, and virtue of the law, the law states that if you are doing a business, your business must be registered. Who are you accountable to? Who are you accountable to? And this is the problem. Everybody is doing what they want to do. And no one is accountable to anyone. Right? No one is accountable to anyone. Right? 
I'm not happy to hear a 16-year-old boy get shoot and kill. Definitely not happy about that. That is such a loss. I have teenager children. I have children. I have six children. Do you think I want to wake up one morning and get a call? You son or daughter was accused of thieving. And without the trial, without anything, your son or daughter was murdered. No, I don't want to get that call. I don't ever want to get the call like that. So you know what I do to prevent myself from getting call like that? I make sure that my children know their place. Like number one, if my son that lyman on the deep big market clock and he ain't got the business, he ain't got not a chick nor a child or any business being there. And I hear my son and daughter snatch a chain, you know what? I gotta think. I got to think to myself. Well, what was my son or daughter doing in that area? Was my son or daughter supposed to be there? What were they doing? My 16 year old child that should probably still be at home studying or learning something. What was my child doing in that area when it is known for having teeth man and junkie lyman around? You know what my child would have been doing? Because whether you like it or not, birds of a feather flock together, my child would have been a teeth man or junkie. I would have had to consider him that. And then I would have had to look at myself as a parent. To say, why did I allow my child to be there? Do I, as a parent, have any accountability in my child's debt? And the answer would be yes. It would be yes. In Guyana, we have to say it. You can't go crab dance and not get mud on your shoe. What was the boy doing there in the first place? I hear people saying, it was alleged, it was alleged, it was alleged. They alleged the buy for teeth in the chain, so like the woman didn't feel she chain get snatched off she neck. Like the man who shoot the little boy, he, he shouldn't have shot him. No, he should have shoot two more. He should have looked for who he did run in for take the chain too. And go and put one in them. Because the bottom line is, we so busy, Blaming the politicians that are, yeah, the politicians have a responsibility. We busy blaming coolie man, we busy blaming black man, we blaming white man, we blaming everybody. But we are not taking no accountability on ourselves as parents to know that if we create the little thing them, we got to mine and manage and maintain the little thing them. So what happened? You just go on and create picnic scunt and left them on the road like wild beasts? Well, they shall be treated like wild beasts. It is not what we want to see. Do you know how upset I am? And at the same time, how grateful I am? For the last couple of days, you know, when I saw that picture, when I saw the picture of the 16 year old by the guest shoot, my heart jumped. My heart jumped back, skipped 10 beats. Y'all probably don't even know why it skipped a couple beats. Because the boy look very similar to a young boy that I am currently mentoring. I'm currently doing mentorship for a young boy named Justin who looked very similar to that other young boy. So as soon as I saw that I jump, I jump, 
And I have to double check. And I said, nah, it couldn't have been Justin. You know why it couldn't have been Justin? I could tell you why it couldn't have been Justin. Real simple. Because Justin was here studying the Bible with me. So it could not have been Justin. But I knew where Justin was. Justin did his Bible study in the morning. <laughs> and, and he started doing his little mechanic apprenticeship throughout the day. So I had full recollection and knowledge as to know where Justin was. So my heart eats. But at the same time, it left me to wonder, is this going to keep happening if our young people do not have adequate role models to look up to and if there is not certain standards and protocols in place? Ladies and gentlemen, you want to ease the crime at Starbrook Market? Well, you know, it's like, it's like, I gotta, like I gotta tell the geniuses how to do this thing. I ain't even want to be president, you know, but maybe I should be. Because I got all of them there. They're protecting people all over the world, Scott, but nobody ain't protecting we people from, from, you know, from shopping. Nobody ain't protecting us from what type of dangers we facing day to day. You talking about all this stuff. We, we, we ready to protect foreigners. We can't even protect we are from going to the market. What's country really telling me, man? You can't protect your own people. Who they in front of you face. You calling out the people. Come, we gonna protect. Protect who? Who you gonna protect? Can't even save with cheering, Scott. They don't know how? They don't know how? But let me tell you something. That young boy is a victim. He may have died as a criminal. Thiefing. May have. I don't know. Wasn't there. I'm just going to what it says. Right? But that little boy is a victim. Why do I say he's a victim? Because his death could have been prevented. If the adults in society would have taken the necessary responsible steps to protect others, he would have also been protected. It is my belief that he was encouraged into that lifestyle based on the area in which he chose to lie. Based on the fact that his parents ain't had time with these squat. Nobody can tell me you 16, you parents got time with you and you dead knocking the boat teeth and chain down the road. And you parents can't come and find you or you beat your little scunt till you get some sense. Because I don't know about you, but I know, I know, if I ain't seeing my child, I look it for my child. When I catch my child, my child gonna wish I didn't have to look for my child. My child will know the full amount of how much responsibility daddy got over them. If daddy got to find them in the wrong place doing the wrong thing. And I bet you when you hold them and you're ready for discipline them, then the same police who ain't doing their job gonna come away and lock you up. Sir, you're abusing your children. Why, sir? Why are you saying that I'm abusing my children? Because I see my child, Tifa Sweetie, and I decide to put some licks in them for the rest of their life so that they never want Tifa again. You gonna wanna lock me up for that? Well, lock me up for it. Because I ain't raising criminals. Before a stranger got to take my child out of this world for being a criminal, well, you know what? I bring he or she in. I would rather be the one to take the responsibility for send my child out of this world as well. And if our parents cannot think like that, well, then do me a favor. Go to the funeral home and ask for a two for one deal. Because one of your children are dead today from stupidness. And you know what? You're going to want the discount for bury the next one. Because the parent and itself are not accepting the responsibility. The government and the police department is not accepting the responsibility to do what is necessary to clean up these areas, to protect the public. No, we are not doing that. So you know what? Let me start Bill more coughing. 
Start cutting down more firewood. We're gonna need it. We're gonna need it. But don't worry. The good thing is, because most of them are gonna die young, we don't need full size boxes. We're gonna get the half box. Because we wanna save money. Right? We're gonna get the half box. You ain't gonna buy a big large food, you can take the half box. And you ram it with your own picnic before you bury them. Right? Some people might say, well, yeah, it's true. You don't believe me? I I, I could, you know, I could I could tell you I, I could tell you all these sweet things that you want here. It still ain't gonna stop somebody from shooting your child or killing your child if your child is uh, decides to become, you know, a danger to society. Right? Now, I remember being a little kid when I was in New York and I was walking down the Grand Concourse with my mother, my sister, and my older brother. And we were headed to church. And I remember that morning, I was walking with my mom. And a man walked up next to her, snaps your chin and push it down and take off. I was a small child. And I felt helpless. If I would have had something there, he would have get it. But I was small, I couldn't do much. But on a day like today, I realized that you can't just blame the chain snatcher. You got to blame the circumstance that allows the chain snatcher to feel that they could get away with it. This thing is not a single-sided component. This thing is as diverse as your DNA. Well, you might see the strong trait, but it does not mean that it does not have other elements in it. For instance, the thief man who wants to snatch chain underneath the clock. Well, the chain will come right back around to the man who is buying it. And then when that chain is bought, it will be smelted and melted. And then it will somehow find its way back in to the natural, legitimate gold market. Do you see how this thing is screwed up? Does anyone see how this can lead to problems? Think about it. Overseas... You go for sell something in a pawn shop, you go somewhere for sell something, people want your name, they want to see ID, they want to do this, right? This is, this is a fact. But in big market, you ain't got no name, nothing. You, you, could, you could just keep something from a man. Keep a little Samsung earbud thing. It look good, gone on the market. Guess what? Somebody gonna buy it. Somebody gonna buy it. Keep a man chain. Gone wrong, do 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 do. Gone back. Somebody gonna buy it. And there's no way to know who is actually buying it because currently underneath the market, mind I say the market does have legitimate businesses, but those legitimate businesses are also overshadowed by the fact that you got uh, you got a thousand people who are not legitimately doing business at the marketplace. But they are in and around and at the marketplace. You got on the big market, big clock. Share weed, scud selling there. Man born in giant. Crackhead walking through. They wrap them living like king coming out the gutter, eating people fruit, gone back in. There's no standards. There's no security. There's no sanitary condition. There's absolutely nothing there. It's just a hub or a slum for teeth, man, them and bandit. And at the same time, the poor population got to pass through this, this savannah filled with lions and tigers as a bunch of defenseless little gazelles walking through the place waiting for be slaughtered like idiots. And no one, no one has been doing what is necessary to fix the problem. Do you want me to tell you why? Because once you have crime, the population lives in fear. 
And when you live in fear, you're going to look for anyone who can make you feel secure. We call that the bitch mentality, right? Bitch mentality, where society turns you into a bitch. You have to sit there and beg Scott for feel safe. You gotta walk around looking like a rape victim all the time, wondering who else can take your bombsy today. That is how they want you. However, the Constitution has instruments within it to protect the people if it is upheld. And only if it is upheld. If it is not upheld, then it makes no sense. We might as well be living in the wild, wild west. Which for me, I don't mind. Because a lot of people that I would like to meet at Sundown, if that is the case, we could take we 10 paces forward, turn around and shoot. But it is not so simple. I wish it was. We would have a lot less problems. A lot less people too, right? Because half of our population would probably be dead at this moment <laughs> because of the ignorance. But yeah, we could do it. I might. But you can't tell me that we playing by by civilized rules when the system is still a Wild West territory. So I'm calling upon the Minister of Public Security to take into his charge the full security of this nation and to st strategically reduce the crime situation at Starbrook Market as well as every other marketplace in this country unless Mr. Ben you are ready to speak to the government to subsidize about 10,000 new coffins that we will need over the course of the next five years a set of young people that are going to get gunned down for doing stupid shit, right? Listen. The first step, and it's just a recommendation, nobody has to take it from me because what do I know? Let me grow up on the streets a little bit, right? What, what do I know? Right, it's stupid he bonded to some of them geniuses and doctors and liars and all of them. All of them been there for how many years and still can't fix simple problem. Make you make you question their intelligence. Right? But anyway, we, we, we pick them so so hopefully we, we, we pick a fruit. Maybe the fruit ain't ripe yet. Maybe it just looking a little force, right? So we gotta wrap this one up like a pear and stick it into some rice until the pear get full. Right? So, so we need to address this thing a little carefully, right? Listen, first and foremost, to the minister, to the president, to whoever is watching, every single person operating a business in or around the marketplace or any business here in this country, that business needs to be registered by law. The Constitution says so. If your police officers are seeing people buying, selling, doing any of this, your police officer should be asking them for a business registration. If they see them buying gold, they are supposed to be a, a license to buy and sell minerals. Why are you police officers not checking for these things? If if the police officers catch a man selling weed, but that become a more dangerous situation because the man got to get checked for two things. One is done illegal for sale, right? But the next one is a more is more serious one. Is he selling low grade or high grade? Because if the man robbed the weed man, the weed man gonna come back and bust his head. And then weeds he'll turn into murder. You think I played? You think them buy them out there who burn their weed want, want cheap weed? The man them go under the clock thinking that they possibly gonna get robbed. And then they go and they get some bush. The man want go back up there and chop up the bush man. Right? So you need to be checking things shouldn't be happening but if the police walk by and see it and many many times I've been at the marketplace constables are right there police are right there big buys
And I know, because some of them are my friends, and the police can't tell them nothing. Don't feel no way, partners. I ain't shouting y'all out. But I got to clean up the country too, right? So y'all yeah, might probably want to start relocating as fast as possible. We all gangster. We all thug, right? Respect, dude. But we, we got we to gotta keep the place safe. Right? So I respect the truth and all of my tags on the way. Can be of assistance and comply to what it is that I'm saying here. It is time to relocate. Because y'all can't keep the place safe. Maybe if the drug dealers could have kept the place safe and keep the man away from the place, nobody wouldn't have had a problem. But now some of y'all can't keep people safe, so you're no longer useful. It's just that. Plus, me and you are friends, right? But one day you might sell drugs to my kid and then I might come and bust your head. So, you know. Right? Yeah, yeah, Judy. I like somebody calling me right there, you know. Somebody's like, yo, be careful what you're saying. Uh, be careful what I'm saying. We die in stunt anyway. What, what are you going to do? Kill me? <laughs> I can come get your boss. Remember, I know where your unregistered business is. And you know where my registered business is. But I also got a couple other things that are very much registered too. So you should probably come and pay me a visit. Right? This thing ain't about friend. This thing is about what is right. You could be a gangster and still protect society. And if you don't know how, I'll show you how. But you can't profit off of destroying with children. You can't profit off of making our streets, right, unsafe. Right? You can't. And if you're not going to be a part of the solution to keep me play safe, well then nobody ain't going to keep you safe doing you hustle either. Because I'm telling you this straight. When I see all that scunt happening on the deck, Plenty time as well get down on plenty banner, but then I say, you know what? They got police and the police don't keep an order. Believe it or not, it is it, the drug dealers and the gangsters that keep order at the marketplace. And ain't no damn police. Police gotta bow down. And nobody can tell me no, because constable and I will get beat upside the head out there. You gotta bring real military, you gotta bring real gunman them as police for keep order them. I'm telling you for what has happened right there. And I know me and plenty of people getting around this morning. Because of what I'm saying. Some people say, they snow, you're taking bread out with mouth. Yo, you taking gold out of people's neck, G. You're taking their cell phone out their pocket. Your drug users who are buying from you are tormenting the rest of society. So it's best we remove you that no drug users there in the area. So it's time to pack up and start motivate. And a lot of you know that I know directly who you is, you know. Because half of my DNA says streets on it. Mm -hmm. So it is an opportunity for those who wish to do what is right. Go register your business. You want to sell drugs? Go get your license as a pharmacist. Once you do that, you can open up a whole bond and call it a storage bond. And the government will pay you five to fifty million dollars a month for rent your bond. You don't believe me? Y'all don't know how for y'all drug dealing them stupid bad stuff. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Bunch of dunce thugs. Y'all, y'all need to catch yourself. But don't worry, if you don't catch yourself, they're gonna kill your skull. Then what? Then what? Tell me. Especially those of you who are big men and I know you, you know me. Tell me, I'm a big, big man. You got pick me. So when somebody kill you out, what gonna happen to your pick me? Do you think society is going to be nice to your children? 
The same way you hustling out of people, girl, cheering. Then, you know, as soon as they pop out the mini boss, you want to get underneath the, the dress. The same way next month, you're going to slatter your daughter to them. The same way you sending out of people, 16 year old, for going to keep the gold chain, for sell it, for come back and do this and this. That's okay. People will slave out your children and send them to do crime. What do you think? This world is a circle. What goes around comes around. It comes around. But we are at the stage in our country's history that if we can't get this shit right, then an outsider will have to come and fix it for us. And it will not be fixed in our interests. Right? Ladies and gentlemen, all of these things that are happening there, at least 50 to 70 percent of it could be avoided if we were to follow our constitution to a T. It could be avoided. But there is nobody in government who is actually doing their job to a T. There's nobody doing their job 100% or even 70%. We got police that are family with teeth, man. We got police that are scared of gangster. How are you going to maintain law and order and you unscared? Tell me. We got racial police. It's a fact. It is a fact. Judy, me putting an application to this government, to any government, you think they ever want to see the Scott? I'll be the jackass who wasted me time and put in application. That's right where they want banner like me. Oh yeah, come. Write this stunt down. Make you sit there and wait 10 years before they even respond. By the time you done run up to them and say what happened, they say, oh, you know. I you know what happened, but I think I see it done in death. So then, you know, I get busy and I have to save the world. And, and, and I have to get 10 new sweet women and, and this and this. And they never get, they never get around to it. It's like a government contract. They don't know who they want to do the work, you know. You can't look at invitation for bid. You can't look at none of this scunt. No, there's a lie. Because they already know who they're giving the contract them to. If you ain't passing a little bread and, and, and you, ain't, you ain't shaking somebody's hand, there's nothing straightforward in Guyana. Look. All this new land that gonna open up on the East Bank right now, where this new road going? This is just this is just an example of it. All this new land that opening up here. Do you know that that land was predominantly bought out and sold out years before the public even know a new road going there? You wanna tell me about keeping the country safe? Right? No way. The public is always kept in the dark by the politicians, and then they keep you busy. They keep you distracted by allowing crime in your areas, allowing the little bullshit. The man them know what they're doing, you know. You can't tell me we got how much doctor, how much doctor's leadership we got, and we country still sick, by. We country still sick, you know. All them doctor, we ain't even get the prescription yet, right? All them liar, all them judge. And we can't even have a law that can be held accountable. Yeah. This is why I don't want to see doctors as presidents no more. I don't want to see liars as president no more. I ain't want to see a fucking tax man as president anymore. Because none of them seem to know how to do the job. 
I'm gonna let them know how to do the job. Because the only way to do this job correctly, we have to humble ourselves and take a little advice. That is it. Take a little advice. But no, body them turn salt in, a Maharaja and a Latin scunt on carpet. We want to buy 200 something million dollars worth of helicopter. How much money we want to spend on rebuilding Mach Stick? But we can't make we marketplace safe or clean. We can't do that. We tear them still can't figure out what's got going on with the education system. I don't even know. And I'm a parent and my child is in school. I can't tell you what's happening with the education system. All I know is that if I don't take it seriously to educate my child, I can't depend on nobody else to do it. Based on what I'm seeing here, Within the next 7 to 10 years, Scott, no Guyanese is qualified to do anything. Share foreigners must come because we are intellectually stupid. The parents don't have the time. They got to go out, they got to walk, they got to try to make ends meet. By the time, if you're a normal working class parent and you live on the East Bank, I feel so sorry for you if you got to take bus and take. Because we get to walk for 8 o'clock, you got to left your house at 6. And if you left in your house at 6, that means you have to wake up a minimum of at least 5 because you have to brush your teeth, you have to shower. You probably have to make something for yourself. What's yet, if you're a single mother, you have to cook something for your picnic before you left. By the time, by time you're done, you spend 2, 2 hours, 3 hours before you even get to work. Then when you get to work, you got to push. They are pushing out of 8 to 10 hours at work. Some of we don't even still make a trio. Some of we ain't even making a 5,000 a day. Some of we still there are 2,000 and something and the government can bite in bundle too. Then you gotta spend another 2 hours to get home. When you get home you gotta cook for your family. By the time the average parent and working class citizen here gone through the whole day, they spend 16 to 18 hours slaving away for every freaking thing else except for themselves. And that has become a standard life here in this country. But all of those things systematically tie back in to our crime problem because young children are watching their parents slaving away every day and ain't going nowhere this is happening you don't know if that 16 year old by see family actually trying for work and can't make it and decide by I gotta try to do something else I can try for teeth right so you don't know what was going through that young man's head. Maybe he did th thinking he just needed to get the bag. But for all the young people out there who want to go and get the bag, let that young man be the perfect example of how to get the bag. He ended up in a body bag. And that's no joke. He ended up in a body bag because he went to get the bag. So in turn, he get what he be looking for if that is the case. If the case is he was after the bag, congratulations young man, you graduated, you get the bag. Now let your mama and your daddy fetch the bag and go bury your scunt or go burn you up. Jai Prasad, this is the case. The system, the constitution, certain things that were set even before many of us were born. 
It caters for these things in society. It is just that we do not have law and order. The relevant agencies are so busy trying to collect bribes, nobody is doing their job. And when poor Papa Snow speak out about it, oh Scott, well then the trolls come out. Some trolls flying on carpet, and other trolls coming in uh, as fake account. I start to think Papa Snow can't get the words out. Well, you know what? It's not my words, man. These are the tears of the people. It's just the Papa Snow that's wiped plenty of tears. So I try to prevent the tears. Because eventually the tears are going to flood us out. I'm not designed to handle that much. I'm only one man. So I must share it. Must share it. Can I hold it in? Must share it. Because if we don't do something, ladies and gentlemen, I fear that there is going to be a lot more killing of our youth who are misled, who have been misinformed, and it is essentially important for the future of our country and to work on cohesion and to ensure that the security is in place for the government to take these recommendations. It's as simple like this. There shouldn't be no liming at the marketplace. There should be nobody sitting down outside by Demico House drinking two beer. What's got going on here? I think we had COVID. These days I can't even go into a proper restaurant and sit down to eat a meal because of COVID rules. So how could people still be liming in front of Big Market or liming underneath Demico House? How is it that for years these are known places where teeth man there, no police in their sight? That place should have the most police. That place should have the most police. You there next to Parliament building. You there across the street from Parliament and people getting their chains snatched. Shame on you, Guyana Police Department. Shame on you, Government of Guyana. You protecting the people inside the building, but you ain't protecting the people who put your skunk in the building. What wrong with you? It's wrong. By the way, happy Diwali. Let me light up your morning, Scott. There's plenty of you chilling this morning in safety and security. And other people there, oh, they're still fighting. Explain it to me. Shame on you. Shame. Do you know how much crime could be prevented? You know how many people can, can avoid a horrible experience? These are the experiences that cause problems. Because if a black boy was to thief a coolie man chain or a coolie girl chain, you know what happened? That's one more talk about all oh, them black people thiefing. If a coolie man was to swindle around, deal a black man under there. They're going to promote more. You know, you see them coolie people like thief man. They like rabies and smarty way. No, you got to do things. To decrease the tension, release the pressure, no? oh, the pressure cooker blow, body a blow, put the little pot food, tsh, tsh, you gotta ease it. Because the pressure will build more than the cooker can handle, then you got a bomb. You need to let out the pressure. Either way, like I said, our Constitution has the facilities in it that would allow us the legal right to bring structure and safety back to the marketplaces and business places here in Guyana. And why is we are on this issue here? Let us talk about something else that is dangerous that is happening here in this country. Right? And that is what is going on with the vendors 
what is going on with the vendors that are just popping up all over the country. Like we ain't got, we ain't got no structure. You walk down Regent Street, you can't even see the businesses that pay and buy the property and pay the taxes. You got 10,000 vendors in front of everybody business. I don't know what the business community is doing. There are a set of idiots. I don't know how y'all stay in business. Imagine you pay for you store, you buy you store, you invest, you come, you set up your store, you spend all your money to, to put a nice display in front of your store for do business. When you come for pull up in front of your store, you can't even see your own store because they got 15 vendors on the parapet and on the curb in front of you. Everybody done throw up tent and everything. And I ain't knocking the hustle for everybody, but oh, there's a way for do things. There's a way for do... I's a hustler. I know that sometimes I just have to walk and sell. But it is wrong to know a man got his business, that he is a legal business, established paying taxes, got to pay employee. Got to pay all of this control nonsense and you got your business right there. And lo and behold, right in front of your business, a man done put up a whole makeshift store. Selling the same thing you selling. But he ain't got to worry about rent. He ain't got to worry about electricity. He ain't got to worry about location, pricing, zoning. He don't have to worry about none of that. You know why? Because up to now, the government cannot handle its own responsibility to deal with proper zoning and to create the necessary platforms or locations that can cater to the emerging entrepreneurship market because that is what it is. It is an emerging entrepreneurship market. All of them are entrepreneurs. They want to work honestly. They want to work hard. But they are not doing so in a conducive manner. And there is no regulation in place to protect those of us who are investing in our businesses? But we could subsidize and make accommodation for outsiders to come in and get leverage and get flexibility but we own business, class citizens, our business community is suffering at the hands of a neglectful government. These issues must be addressed. When APNU took over in 2015, Guyana became a wild, wild west. The amount of, of people that go and you know, we want a business on Regent Street. We ain't got money for buying business on Regent Street. But fuck buying the business. We can go and throw down something there. And, and they can't move we. Why couldn't they move them? Because Granger said they couldn't move them. Because Granger scunt wanted support. So Granger encouraging people for do nonsense. That was the talk. Not my opinion. That was the talk, right? Because... I see people go there, so I'm not accusing Granger or anything, because I ain't able to get sued or nothing like that, right? All I got right now is something red for give. So if you're suing me, I know what you're getting. Good. So I understand it, right? That and a big mouth, right? But the whole thing is, is that from 2015 and forward, our business community has been under attack. And everybody terrified for talk. Terrified. Can't talk. You go in front of your business and tell them, hey, what you doing here, buddy? You can't do this here. The man won't beat you and kill you. You can't represent yourself. They call the police. The police say, well, the government allow it, so we can't do nothing. You're forcing we people to suffer. But suffer we people suffering. And it's our business class, our working class that is suffering the most. 
And those are the people we should be subsidizing, we should be reinforcing them, we should be helping them because those are the ones that can create internal opportunities to help reduce the stress of unemployment on the market. But no, 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 no. We're not doing that. Instead, we're allowing our working class and our business class citizens to become victims due to negligence on higher levels. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all got good sense, right? Why are we still allowing this? Why are we not raising help? Why are we not making God turn in his sleep until this matter is addressed? I'll tell you why. Because we have all been bitchified. That's exactly why. We have been completely bitchified. From all of the bullying, all of the slowness, all of the running around. We have systematically accepted this as the norm. But I for one have not been born retarded. And I don't believe many of you who were born retarded. That you ain't got no sense. You don't know what's going on. Plenty you got sense. A real sense too. But this is time for us to put our sense together. And let it make sense till it make dollars. But instead no. We thief in the two bit in the thing. Bit for Maranado. We busy fighting each other down. Instead of building each other up. Not me. I can't sit down and watch this nonsense. Not without opening up me mouth. Not without doing something. I'm sorry. I, I am born for be somebody's bitch. Unless she looks really, really good. I might I might consider that one. She, she's got to look really good, though. Like, really, really good. Like, drop that gorgeous, nice bombs, you know. Now, I, I could probably be being in that circumstance. But, but other than that, it's not really my thing. I don't smell like one. I don't look like one. I don't behave like one. I don't think any of you do either. So I think it is necessary that we become anti-bitchified. If that is such a word. Right? But we have been programmed systematically over years of all the neglect to behave a particular way. And we allow it. But ladies and gentlemen, hopefully we can speak up enough and we can save the lives of a lot of our young people who might be a little wayward. We can prevent it. We can save their lives, you know, give them a chance to actually grow up and be decent human beings by following the Constitution. If someone is under big market or in any public place where business is going on and they are doing or transacting a business, I'm calling on the police department, the Guyana police department and the government of Guyana that every time you see someone doing business, they should be questioned for their goddamn business registration. And if they are in any public zone like that and they do not have legal proof that they are there doing business, arrest them, move them off. Because if they are not legally doing business there, then they are there for a different purpose. We must keep our people safe. If the Guyana Police Department enacts that procedure instantly by this next weekend coming up, all the marketplace cleaning, you ain't seeing teeth, man. No lime and skunt unless you got business there. No playing your walk in there unless you got the registration or some way to prove who you are and what you're doing there. You're buying gold under the clock, you better have a license to buy gold. You're selling drugs under the clock, you better have a pharmacy license. And the government can do this instantly. They have the manpower. Those are small places. But when the police move them, big brother, shoot the scunt. You mean? It better you shoot them when they disobedient to the law. Then you allow the anarchy. What do you mean? The government ain't got balls. Nobody can tell me about protests. The police can't tell me about protests. When the police walked into Ashman building and put out all of our international observers under somebody's illegal, illegal command. 
Nobody been talking about protest then. But the protest gotta come, let it come. But let the government be ready to stand firm in what is right. And not play bullyism protest. Scott, they feel this is. Protest? You, you better protest when you're not breaking the law. You can't come and, and go against the Constitution and talk about you protesting against the Constitution. No, then you become an enemy of the state and bullet in your skull. What do you mean? You gonna, you, you gonna take, you gonna take bullies up? You gonna take bullies up? No. There's a method and a manner in which a person must protest. Martin Luther King did it peacefully. Gandhi did it peacefully. If somebody want to do it warishly, well, this bullet they go catch. This bullet, because you are doing it in the interest of saving lives. And anyone who is against saving lives will let their life be the first life to be lost. Because something must be done. Immediate action must be taken. In the interest of public security. And public security should be held paramount over anything else in this country. How do you expect? How do you expect to, to keep structure if you cannot enforce discipline? But that discipline must be enforced non biasly and in accordance. To the laws of Guyana, which are already stipulated and laid out to us in our constitution, there is a penalty for operating a business without a license. Lock them up. There's a penalty for selling food on the road without a food card for sure that you're clean with health. Lock them up. There is a penalty for breaking the law. Are you telling me about protests? Let me tell you something about protests. As soon as people realize the government serious cut, that protest stop. There's only people that feel that they can bully you. But you got to do it for the right reasons. And if saving our young people from getting killed is not a good enough reason, then you're not a good enough government. Bottom line. Because you can't save today but bun tomorrow or you have no future. Or show me how you're going to do that one. Because I'm, I'm clueless on that. You want to clean it up. There's ways to clean it up. And it starts with upholding the Constitution as it refers to business registrations and regulatory uh, and regulations that deal with it. Everyone operating on the big market or in, in the marketplace should have a business registration. If the government walk in there right now, if, if commercial registry was to set an officer right now and start pull up everybody in big market or all these places that don't have a business registration, you know how many people be off the road by tomorrow morning? You know how safe we play it's getting five minutes? If there's no man there for buy the thief and thing, no thief man there, there about. If there's nobody there for sell the drugs, no junkie ain't there about. Tell me if I lie. There's always a cause and effect. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's about 10 o'clock. I got a meeting to go to. Uh, for any one of you who would like to share your opinion, it's perfectly fine. I welcome your opinion. If you cuss me, I can cuss you back. If you're respectful to me, I can be respectful to you. I am born to be your friend, right? And I'll probably die without you as a friend. That's life. But the truth is the truth, and it is what it is, right? But if you do have better suggestions, share it. I'm willing to be educated. I'm open to take advice. I believe in this life. You should always take advice. I don't know everything, but I do know one thing. I know how to clean up the market. Please, son. So I hope it, that the minister, whoever watching this, can start from that angle. If you only start from that angle, you start cleaning that place up right away. Right? All right. In the meantime, y'all take care. God bless. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. And happy Diwali.
Let's light them up today.